All right, we have two by three downspouts on this house. The guy's got the three inch plus hooked up to this. Look at how nice this three inch plus was to run. We got the catch basin. It, it already has the stone pocketed with some fabric around the catch basin. Take a look at this. You see how this goes right under the sprinkler lines, having to go through a sprinkler system. You can see there's a double main right there, double main. So they had the perfect slope on the bottom of the trench. They were able to maintain it. They use a three to four increaser. It's an increaser reducer, depending on how you use it, to our extra heavy duty Y. So that's how you tie a three inch plus to a four inch fitting. You have an increaser that goes from three inch to four inch right there. So they have a really nice slope on this four inch line. The reason why they run four inch line over here, we have a downspout right here, all this roof water right here, and that, that water up top, some of that's making it in that valley, finding its way over here. We have all this roof on the back of the house here, this whole run. So these two are tied together. They're wide together. Guys are putting them on a four inch main. So water would collect in here. They have this really nice area where they can put their lawn chairs around a fire. And the water likes to get caught up right here. So the guys went ahead Guys did a really nice job. They took a 12 by 12 curve plate. Put some big stone over that grate. All that water that would get caught on this landscape edging right here. They're gonna grab that up. They have a solid pipe that they're running in their trench. They're gonna have downspouts on it. They're gonna have this catch basin on it. They're taking everything to a storm drain. There's gonna be a perforated pipe and a solid pipe in this trench. They've already dug all the dirt out and they've, they've already cored and tapped the storm drain. There used to be a pop-up emitter that just went to the storm drain and it wasn't enough. You have to dig down and you have to core through the sidewall of your storm drain. It's the only way you're gonna get this water out of this trench. Notice how there's no dirt on the side of the trench. They have some sod that they put to the side because we're gonna grow grass over this. It's gonna be a covered French drain. But do you see a row of dirt on this side? Do you see a row of dirt on this side? You do not. That's because when we put in a French drain, we haul away all the dirt. That's why our French drains work as good as they do. Now here, this is a solid line. This solid line is for a catch basin that's right there catching up bulk water. They're gonna put the dirt back on it because it's not a French drain. It's not a perforated pipe. So they're not gonna put fabric in the trench and they're not gonna put stone around it. Over here, you can see where the French drain ends. They started keeping the dirt. Why are they keeping the dirt? Because it's a solid roof runoff system line. They're gonna put the dirt back on top of it. Solid pipe typically doesn't get stone and fabric. So you can see with all the landscape how the water just gets trapped in the swale. There's just a small green belt left. There's not much. So the guys are going to have that solid pipe that you see right there for the roof runoff. They're going to tie that catch basin into that solid pipe. Then they're going to have a perforated pipe in that trench as well. They're going to grab all the water, send it to the storm drain. Right now, they're running all the piping. They have two perforated pipes. Again, we have the same type of situation here. We have a lot of landscape. We have water in the swale. It's just getting trapped in a screen belt. Water doesn't flow through grass very well. There's plenty of slope here, but this is not concrete or asphalt. If it was pavers, concrete, asphalt, some sort of pavement, the water would run just fine. But water has a really hard time finding its way through grass. Grass really holds it up. So that's why these French drains expedite the process of draining your yard. All right, Francisco went ahead and he put a clean out on the end of this perforated pipe. You can see the pipe's perforated. He's got a riser on this, not quite a 90, so that we can get it to grade. This system is going to need to be flushed with copper sulfate yearly. 
So you got that perforated pipe and you got these arborvitae trees and they are just gonna have a field day with this. There's been seven maple trees planted for shade. We're gonna have a clean out on each French drain pipe. There's two perforated pipes in the bottom of this trench. What a perforated pipe is, it's a pipe with holes. So it takes in the water. One will just have a four inch cap. The other one will have the turf restrictor plate and a four inch cap. You can put two turf restrictors on if you want, but just so that it doesn't look too mechanical and doesn't get too busy, we just want the one turf restrictor plate on so that we can locate these if we ever have to run a camera through them, if we ever have to jet them or service them. Now you want to cut one pipe shorter than the other so that you can stagger them. This trench got deep because they are running it all the way from the house and they wanted to have a really nice slope on the system. So by the time they got here where the French drain begins and the French drain now is being built in the same trench as we work this water towards the storm drain, that's why we needed a riser. We were deeper and you can see these risers give you two inch lifts and they stack on each other. No screws, no glue, nothing. Just slip them on, beautiful fit easy for contractors and DIYers and it's the strongest yard drain components in the industry. So in case you're wondering why the old French drain didn't work, it was a perforated pipe with a sock on it, two inches below the surface. Look how deep our trench is next to theirs. And there's a small amount of pea stone around it. You can see that the pea stone literally clogged you can see how all the dirt migrated in the voids of the stone. So it has no permeability anymore because they didn't use a good drainage fabric. So this is what it looks like when you have two intersecting French drains and then you have a solid pipe for roof runoff. You have to get that solid pipe all the way to the storm drain because you don't want to tie downspouts into your perforated pipe. A saw cut perforated pipe We'll collect all the shingle gravel, uh, you know, leaf buds, any kind of debris. Rooftop debris will get caught in those perforations and you're done. So you want to have a solid pipe that runs all the way to the storm drain. And you want to have your perforated pipe with no downspouts on it, no catch basins on it. Saw cut perforations, you can't put catch basins on it either. You want to run that right up to the storm drain. Then you Y them together. It's going to be a pretty low flow application. So we only needed to do one core and tap. So the guys did a really nice tie in here. So they'll get the slope perfect as they backfill and they work together as a team. You can see how that solid line came in, went right over top of that perforated. Luckily this pipe was higher than the French drain pipe, so it worked. But if you ever have a situation where this pipe is as low because of the slope and the run and the distance that perhaps it was ran at, just put a pop-up right by your French drain stone and it'll grab up all the water. But you never want to tie catch basins and downspout lines into a perforated pipe. You don't want to do that. There's a lot of liability to that. You can see they cored through it. Did a beautiful job too, nice clean core. And they're going to get that installed and then they're going to use hydraulic concrete around it. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. If you have any questions regarding this installation, leave them in the comment section.
I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.